Hey everybody, it's Cynthia Maynard, and I hope you're doing well today. I've been playing around with different ways to make journals. I've done some stitched ones, as simple as layering papers up and stitching them, but I've had a cinch machine for quite a while, and I wanted to try um, out using that. I'm the kind of person that really likes to read the directions before I do anything. I do, I, when it comes to little machines like that, I don't know why I get so nervous about it, but I finally dipped in. I, part of it, too, is I got the wires. Let me show you the package of um, wires that I got from We Are Memory Keepers, of course, the makers of this thing. Now, I got one and a quarter inch ones, which are rather large, uh, knowing what I know now. These are one inch ones here, and I still have plenty of room, but um, but they're kind of pricey, and you only get two. One, two. You get 20, 22 of 24 rings. Of course, you can cut these apart to match whatever you're making. But I found a better price was the Zutter uh, Bind It All, which is kind of the competition for the cinch. And you get a pack of six uh, of these rings. And so it just, it and they fit perfectly with the cinch binder, so it's not a problem. This is one that I was kind of playing around with. I have some graphics a chipboard. You can see I made a mistake here with what I wanted to do. But anyway, and then I decorated the cover, which was fun, with some different texture paste and sprays and things. And um, basically I put some mixed media paper in here and so forth, then some tags that are removable, like that, and then you can put them back in. Some different um, cardstock and things like that in there just to kind of play around as my own personal journal. Um, obviously you can see the difference between this is a one inch ring and then what I put in there. So it could fit a lot more, but you do want to leave a little extra room as you use textural elements. It's going to get chubbier and chubbier. So anyway, when I was cutting apart my chipboard for this, this is a six by six album, I had these strips left of, um, let's see, what are they? They are about 12, maybe 11 three quarters by five and a half. And I had two of them, and so I thought, oh, what a fun way to do a landscaped album. I thought that would be nice. So I went ahead and pre-cut. I took my two panels, and on the inside, I pre-cut some um, matching paper, just shy of that, so it would be a little bit smaller. And I did a couple repeats. So I used mixed media paper. I used some... 12 by 12 um, double-sided paper. I used some sturdy cardstock, printed cardstock, uh, and then I repeated. Um, so once I got through that initial set, I repeated that again. And then I thought we could put that together today using the cinch board in case you were curious about using that. And uh, it's a useful, useful tool. And I thought that would be a fun album. Uh, it's nice to challenge yourself to work in different shapes. Um, so you have your typical journal, which is a rectangle. Um, you have a square like this, a 6 by 6 square that's slightly smaller, so everything has to be scaled down. Uh, I've seen circle journals and heart journals, and so this is a, a landscape journal. So I have some leftover rings that I have from my last project, so let's see if I can do this correctly again. Cinch machine, they make use of all the different sides, so you've got the initial side here where you punch the holes and then you have um, your ring size here you know depending on how wide your rings are basically it's just to squash it so uh, and then over here is where you load the rings on to get papers in order and so forth and it's it's pretty simple to use so um, when you have this pushed in it's already pushed into a six by six so for example when I made this six by six album this fit right in there without having to move this at all so that was pretty simple this one obviously is um, skinnier than that so I'm going to get my you don't want to use you want to pull out so I'm going to do this configuration. I'm going to pull out the three on either side and I'm going to leave one, two, three, four, five, six in the middle pushed in. So those are going to be, the ones that are pushed in are going to be the things that my hole punch will punch. And of course, uh, in, when you're using the O-rings, you want them to go right in order. Uh, if I were just doing a three ring binder or something, then you can go pick your own configuration. But since these are right next to each other, you have to have them right next to each other. 
uh, if that makes sense. That doesn't leave a comment below, and I'll clarify that for you. But um, so for this situation, because my let me grab my cover here, because my cover is very uh, thin, um, I'm going to kind of center that in the middle of these punched ones here. Okay. To butt it up next to here, um, I'm going to change my configuration because I just realized I, you, could, you could do it freehand, but I'm going to butt it up next to here, and I want it to be centered uh, on either side. So I'm going to push. I'm going to pull out these three and pull out these four. So those are not going to punch, and these one, two, three, four, five instead in the center. I'm going to see if I like that. Uh, if not, I can always put it back in and push this one in. So. Uh, and we want to do the same for all of our papers. So you just punch that down. You can see these are the ones that are going down. And you pull that up. And then you have your little hole punch. Okay, I can just put that up against there. Push it all the way to the back as far as it can go. And up against the thing. Push down. And then that's going to line up with... Um, the one that you just punched. The little tray here that gets all your bits there that you can clean out. And you count how many holes you have. One, two, three, four, five. So I only need five hooks here because these are the things that are holding on, going through our holes. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to cut in between this one with some wire cutters of whatever you have. These are, we are Memory Keeper wire cutters and plier, pliers. But uh, whatever you have there will work just fine. Maybe these won't work. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> you can just save that bit and make an album using those. So you can not waste any of that. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And then you just hang it on the side here because it's just this, all this is is threading. It's just holding it for you. It's another pair of hands to thread our um, stuff on here. So. Let me move this back, I'm trying to fit as much as this as I can because this is long one. And then we just simply thread them on. Okay, so once you have it all threaded on there, you can move it, you know, if you want to do it that way. But we're going to go ahead and use this side now, the side that is the measurement for your ring uh, diameter. So this, these are one inch rings, So, uh, but I'm going to put them slightly smaller to the 7 8 because I felt like when I did the one inch I had to push a couple times. So I put mine at 7 8 for the one inch. And then you simply put it underneath there. You're seeing that? Um, it's just a little squasher. That's really all it is. Um, so you're just getting that underneath there and you're pressing that same handle down all the way. Then you pull it out and you check. Now, when you get these little bits that are sharp, you can uh, either trim that closer um, and sand that really quickly, uh, or you can twist it underneath. Um, like that. You can use the plier end to kind of turn that in so you don't catch on anything because we've all had those notebooks, right, that catch. Um, on there. And then I've got one on this side here, so I'm just going to kind of turn it in. Okay, and then you have your bound book. 
So basically you can make any shape book that you like um, with the cinch machine. You, you don't even have to use the coils. You can use it as a hole punch, which is nice because it does thicker materials. So uh, it takes the place of that. But that way you've got plenty of... I'll get it upside down. Uh, that way you've got plenty of room here because of the diameter of the rings to put um, dimension in here if you want to put die cuts or um, uh, texture paste and things like that. It can all add up on every page if you know what I mean. So uh, and now you have a great little book full of um, art journal to go ahead and you can decorate the front because this is black chipboard. And that would look really fun. You can decorate the back and you have your own little art journal. So hopefully that helps. Um, it's a fun machine to use. Um, like I said, I've had it a while now and I've just recently got out and played with it. So I'm kind of having fun. I like the ability to make, uh, to use up your scraps and make, uh, make things in just about any size you can think of. And I could have put, you know, the whole thing bound down the side. I just thought it kind of looked neat like that but um, you can get uh, smaller diameter rings or bigger ones um, the next time I order I think I'm going to get a little bit smaller maybe a half inch and or so and see how I like that as well but anyway I hope that helps you if you've got a cinch machine or if you've been thinking about it I don't have a Zutter one so I can't compare the two but I'm sure you can find a video about comparing those and um, I, re I really like the cinch machine. We are memory keepers. They're kind of known for making things very user friendly and um, the directions are on there and all that sort of thing. So um, yeah, I like it. I like how it turned out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new here to be in on the giveaways and um, to stay in the loop for new videos. Thanks so much. Have a great day.